Hey everybody, it's Benzie Mark and I am back with another video. I'm actually coming to you guys really off the cuff. It didn't take time to plan this video out or come up with an outline or anything. Um, I was in the middle of watching the news with my husband, um, really about the terrible, devastating things happening in the Ukraine. Um, this isn't about the Ukraine, but I did want to just kind of mention that and uh, just kind of take a minute to kind of recognize and honor you know, the, the suffering that these people are enduring kind of suddenly. Um, yeah. And in the midst of that news coverage, um, something came up that was at least some, a little bit of light that has nothing to do with the Ukraine, but it was just something that they decided to cover in the midst of what, what's happening in the war there. And, um, it appears as though there is a woman who's being considered to be appointed to the Supreme Court. Um, I'm not super familiar with the name. I will insert that information here and actually a photo of what she looks like. Um, but the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I remember a long time ago, I made a video about braids versus locks and their professionalism and what does it mean for the black woman who works in a professional setting. Um, I brought up how a friend of mine said that, you know, she keeps her hair in box braids for manageability. And I remember I, I uh, said to her, hey, why don't you consider locks? Like it would be a great way for you to kind of get a similar look, but with your own hair, you could invest that money that you're paying to get synthetic hair placed, like invest it into your own hair and let it grow out. And I remember she responded that, um, you know, she wasn't gonna do that because the locks weren't professional. And with this new woman who's being considered to the Supreme Court, I noticed that she has what appears to be micro locks. And I thought, wow, wow, wow the biggest accomplishment on the table is not what her hair looks like. It's that she's being considered to fill a seat, but a small aside that I was like, wow, what a moment to just take a minute and recognize where we are. We have a, a unambiguously black woman being considered to fill the seat on the Supreme Court and she has locks. She doesn't have a relaxer. She's not wearing a weave. She has her natural hair locked into beautiful ropes of hair. And I thought, wow, this is a moment we need to take a, a minute to stop and just take inventory of where we are in culture. Because there was, and I still think in many spaces, and perhaps that's changing, um, but there was just this common belief that in order to get ahead, in order to succeed and to maneuver in predominantly white spaces, it was an unspoken requirement that you had to assimilate your physical appearance to that of European beauty standards. And for a long time, not only was that an unspoken expectation, but it was widely true. It was widely true that in order to maneuver spaces where you were the token, you had to look like the majority. And if you failed to do that, it could actually hold real ramifications about how far you could go and what kind of success you could have. And I think that one of the beautiful things that the natural hair movement did is it started to change that narrative and that expectation. At one point, um, a lot of even black women and others clearly felt that to enter into a professional um, setting with your uh, Afro hair, was unprofessional or it was political or insert whatever you want. And then the reputation of locks was even worse than that. And so, you know, we dealt with that case. I don't remember how long ago it was I'll insert some information. For those of you who don't know, um, it was recently deemed legal um, to discriminate in the workplace based on whether a person has dreadlocks or not, locks or not, depending on what terminology you use. But there was something about a ruling that made it legal for businesses to say that locks were not um, an allowed or accepted hairstyle in their particular workplaces. Now I'm seeing a woman who's being considered to sit on the Supreme Court and she has locks. Things are changing. Things are changing in a way that, and, and I think I also want to point out she's potentially going to sit on the Supreme Court without any alteration to her physical appearance. She is in, in many ways um, embodying a lot of just African heritage 
black people's heritage in her facial features, in the texture of her hair, in the fact that she hasn't altered her hair to look like something that is kind of alien to what naturally comes from our people. Like what an incredible moment this is to really just consider how things have changed and the degree to which they have changed to the fact that we have, we might potentially have locks in the Supreme Court. I want you guys to weigh in on what this, uh, what this means to you. Does it mean anything at all? Or is it just, you know, something else to just talk about? But for me, this felt like a, a pretty big moment that I wanted to just take a minute and pause and consider that. Like, wow, look how far we've come. But at any rate, I want you guys to leave your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this. As always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time.